A couple of weeks ago, while I had some time off from work, I actually had a weekend off about three weeks ago, I decided to build this ESR tester. Um, this came from plans from a guy by the name of Lawrence P. Glaster from Nanus Bay, British Columbia, Canada. Um, I looked at several different designs on the internet and decided this is the one for me. I didn't have to wind a custom transformer or anything like that. And while that isn't necessarily that big of a problem, it isn't something I've done before. And I just didn't want to spend the time doing it on this particular project. Um, I've taken the liberties of already pulling the screws out of this. So I'll pull the top off here in a second. Basically, just got a little on off switch. Um, this is the zero pot. Let's see, put this down, put these up. Hook the leads up and use this to zero it out. And now you're ready to test some capacitors for equivalent series resistance. I haven't uh, made a custom scale for my meter yet. I may or may not. I already made a scale on paper. So I have a pretty good idea that just about any capacitor that goes below 40 milliamps or microamps on the scale is definitely bad and anything over about 200 microfarads if I move much more than one scale division that capacitor is also bad. One scale division is somewhere around 0.15 ohms if I remember right. I'll get into that in part two. I'll shut this thing off and let me pull the top off of it. Well, there's the insides. Pretty simple design. I kind of left it a rat's nest. I haven't had a chance to tie everything up really nice. I don't know if I will or not because quite honestly it doesn't really matter for what this is other than just making it look good. But I decided to run mine off of a 9 volt transistor battery rather than I can't remember. I think he runs his off of 4 uh, one and a half volt NICADs and I guess he had some trouble with the display changing as the NICAD batteries drained and then I just basically run that into a 5 volt voltage regulator that's a um, LM1084-5 5, 5 volt fixed low drop voltage regulator and then there's the uh, the brains of it right there. That's a 74HC14, which is a hex Schmidt trigger. And if you look on the uh, schematic here, basically you've got a RC network here that he claims is 156 kilohertz but if you do the math on this it's probably closer to 100 kilohertz one of the things I'll do here in a second is I'll test what the actual frequency is with my I brought my um, Fluke 87 home from work that has a pretty decent frequency meter on it so basically it takes the first channel that Schmidt trigger turns that into a square wave generator and then uses all the rest of them as a buffer and a filter and basically runs across here and drives that 2N220 2222 which actually I had a bunch of 2219s on hand which are almost identical I think they have a little bit more 
power capacity and then that drives the meter So let me uh, I'll flip this thing on and I'll see what kind of frequency I'm getting out of it. So it's actually showing about 127 kilohertz. Take a look at the meter, about 128 kilohertz. Using the fluke meter, I don't know how accurate that is on a square wave, on a really uh, noisy square wave for that matter. So take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. Now the next thing I'll do here, I'll uh, power up my oscilloscope and I'll put this camera on a tripod where I'm not trying to maneuver it and take measurements at the same time. And we'll see what we get on the scope. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'll try to get in there without knocking this tripod over. It's right beside my chair. first test point we're going to do is the output of this which would be pin 2 on the 74HC14. Flip this thing on. As you can see it's actually not too bad of a square wave. It's kind of surprising. There's a little bit of a spikiness to it right at the very top and as you can see, kind of dips there and dips there, but overall, considering all the more that's there, it's not a bad square wave at all. But that isn't really important to the functionality of this, but it is kind of nice to know that you could take something like this and actually make a decent square wave out of it. Okay, let's go to pin which is one of the outputs in the buffers. As you can see it's pretty close to the same. Back to pin 2. Yeah. Basically all those buffers are going to do is just give it a little bit more power capacity. And the output of the 680 ohm resistors, and you can see that drops away off, and that makes it real ugly. That's pretty nasty looking there. But again, that isn't important to the functionality of the circuit. Okay, so next up, what I'll have to do, I'll have to short these two together. Basically, on the output of this, you're going to get zero at, in, at an infinite resistance. I've got the two leads shorted together. And let's see if we can find get a signal off the base. I don't have much room to get a hold of it from the 2N2222. Give you an idea where I'm going. I'm taking a signal from right there. 
if I can get it. Okay, there we go. Pretty close to the same. Now, let's see if I can get a signal from the emitter. the emitter and I'll try the collector. Okay that buries it. Of course that's the idea that gives you enough drive to drive that meter and actually I think let's see it says the gain is approximately 10.5. I'm thinking about maybe experimenting with the gain on that. I like to increase that to maybe like 15 or 20. I'll have to see how much gain of 2219 is capable of. But I'd really like to drive at least a 100 microamp meter rather than a 50 microamp to expand the lower resistance end of the scale. Because basically what I'm finding out is anything over about 200 microfarads um, it really doesn't show any meter movement at all and I don't know whether that means I have a good one or a bad one if the if we go to say like a half an ohm of VSR I think I move like a couple meter divisions but if you look on different data sheets capacitor gets bigger you might have say tenths of milliohms of VSR as a spec so if that drops way off or if that increases quite a bit it still may not show up on the meter or just barely move the meter so I'd kind of like to expand that lower scale out and uh, we'll try and see what happens but anyways that's basically what you get get out of it. Um, I guess on the next video I'll just um, get an assortment of capacitors and do some testing on it and we'll see what we get.